Okay, guys. So chapter 14, autonomics. What I've got on the board, um, I'll have to post for those of you watching the video. We've got two divisions here, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And what you have to know is exactly what's written on the board. Sympathetic is fight or flight. So it's known also as the thoracolumbar division. The nerve roots that supply all of the sympathetic flow are going to come from T1 to L2. The ganglia that are involved are known as two different types. We have paravertebral and prevertebral. So just know those, uh, the prefixes mean everything here. Paravertebral simply means that they're found on both sides of the spine, just outside the bone. So para means just beyond or just outside. Vertebra means bone. So they're paired. There's two of them. As you can see on the picture over there, the two string of beads that we've got just outside the spine, one on the left, one on the right, those are the paravertebral ganglia. They're also known as the sympathetic chain, the sympathetic ganglia, and the sympathetic trunk. It's all the same thing. So we've got four ways to describe the very same group of nerve cell bodies, which is that paravertebral ganglia. The other ganglia that are used in sympathetics are called prevertebral. So those are a little more tricky. These are located on the front of the spine. And where I've got it drawn here is, if you look on my picture, the aorta, which is anatomically just anterior, resting on the spinal bones. Around that aorta is going to be wrapped a bunch of this, uh, these ganglia, which are called the prevertebral ganglia. So I've got them written there in the green, and the aorta is written there in the red, just in front of the spine. So just know, for the test, prevertebral, paravertebral are the two types of ganglia used in the sympathetic flow. Okay, then we have different types of neurons. So on the ganglionic side, before you get to the ganglia, it's known as a preganglionic neuron, and after the ganglia is the postganglionic neuron. The short ganglionic on the pre side is what we see here. So any neuron that needs to go to the heart, let's say, needs to pass through a ganglia. On the sympathetic side, it's a short preganglionic neuron getting to the sympathetic chain and then a longer postganglionic getting to the actual organ that it serves, any of the organs that they serve. Notice also the last thing we, um, we have written, well actually it's not on the board, sorry, but the neurotransmitters used are going to be acetylcholine at the level of the ganglia and norepinephrine used at the level of the organ. So if you wanted to include that in your notes, we're going to see this in the PowerPoint just in a little bit. So preganglionic uses acetylcholine right here at the level of the ganglia. Postganglionic uses norepinephrine. So two words we're going to see at the very end of this discussion will be any neuron that uses acetylcholine is known as a cholinergic neuron. So if you flip fast forward to your last slide in this chapter, you'll see those, those two terms, cholinergic and adrenergic. Cholinergic means two things. It means the neuron either uses acetylcholine, or we can use that term to describe the receptor receiving or being sensitive to acetylcholine. So in this case, if I'm talking about a preganglionic neuron, I'm talking about the neuron that approaches the ganglia, We'll be using acetylcholine to get its message across, right? So it's known as cholinergic. Then the group of cell bodies that it's synapsing with, or one cell body, that reception of that nerve impulse will be considered cholinergic as well. So the, the receptor and, right, and the neuron itself. So specifically here, on the heart, talking sympathetic flow, what type of receptor do we have there on the heart? What neurotransmitter is it receiving? This is norepinephrine. So norepinephrine is not acetylcholine, right? So we call those adrenergic. Cholinergic uses acetylcholine. Adrenergic uses norepinephrine. 
So anything to do with norepinephrine, whether it's the neuron using it or the re receptor receiving it, would be considered adrenergic in this case. Okay, so now I can ask you questions like, the postganglionic sympathetic neuron serving the heart, <laughs> ready? Is it cholinergic or adrenergic? Adrenergic. The receptors on the heart, are they cholinergic or adrenergic? Adrenergic, beautiful. One other thing, is the postganglionic neuron myelinated? No. No. Is the preganglionic neuron myelinated? Yes. Yes, perfect. Are all preganglionic neurons myelinated? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right, that was the last step. Good. So on the parasympathetic side, if we go on that world for a second, notice have different nerves that supply the parasympathetic flow. It's known as the craniosacral division. We know it already as the rest and digest. It's the part of the nervous system that slows us down. Craniosacral means we have nerves coming from the cranial area, which is brainstem, and then the sacral spinal nerves. So the four cranial nerves responsible for parasympathetic flow are going to be 3, 7, 9, and 10. And remember, these are paired, right? So we're talking, there's two cranial nerve number threes, there's two cranial nerve number sevens, and so on. And also we have sacral spinal nerves, two, three, and four, right down here, coming from the sacral spine. So only those nerve fibers will uh, contribute to parasympathetic flow. And which one is the most famous? Ten. Number 10, the vagus. I think that Robert basically knows exactly what I'm going to say at all times. <laughs> I think you got me wrapped up. That's great. What am I thinking right now, Robert? Yes. Yeah? Oh, good. I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'm thinking about the vagus. So notice the vagus nerve coming out of brainstem, right? It's going to be different orientation than we had in sympathetics. We have a long preganglionic and a very short postganglionic. And speaking of ganglia, where is the ganglia located in the parasympathetic flow? Is it located near the spine or near the organ that it serves? Near, near or at or on the actual organ that it's serving. So that's why they call it terminal ganglia. So the notes that I've written beside each ganglia as to where they're found, you should definitely know that. Terminal ganglia are parasympathetic ganglia. They're located at the organ that they serve. So notice, that's what gives us a very long preganglionic neuron and a very short postganglionic. Okay, good. And since we're talking vagus, we know that the vagus nerve touches all these organs right throughout the body. Where the vagus nerve doesn't necessarily go is something that the sacral spinal nerves will serve, which is going to be the reproductive organs, which I did not draw on the board. Excuse me for not drawing that. I'm not that good at drawing, so I didn't want to <laughs> severely mess that up. Or the bladder, right? So we'll see that. But using the example of the heart, it's real easy to see the vagus reaching the heart. Now, keep in mind, are we using anything of the sympathetic chain to get to the heart on the parasympathetic flow? No, these fiber pathways do not mix. As a matter of fact, do we use any of the spinal nerves in the cervical, thoracic, or lumbar spine on parasympathetic flow? No, it's all cranial nerves or sacral nerves, right? There's no mixing of these nerve pathways of sympathetic and parasympathetic. So like it's written on the board, the vagus will, of course, serve the heart. It'll serve the GI tract. It'll serve the, the kidneys, all that kind of stuff, right? But what if we want to go to the bladder? What serves the bladder or the reproductive organs? The sacral nerves, right? So the bladder and reproductive organs, if you want to make a notation, will be served by the sacral nerves, but all the other organs throughout the body are served by the vagus. The bladder and reproductive organs are served by the sacral spinal nerves parasympathetically. So if you want to talk, you know, straight anatomy, 
let's say um, a patient has a trouble, a young patient, a, a kid, has trouble bedwetting, right? Where might a chiropractor look in the spine to look for nerve interference? Sacrum. Sacrum, right? Let's say a patient has a problem with high blood pressure. Let's say the, the adrenergic, adrenergic receptors are overstimulated on the heart. Where might a chiropractor pay attention to for nerve problems? Up around C1, because that's the closest we can get to the brainstem. There might be pressure at the brainstem, which causes swelling along the medulla, which can cause irritation to the vagus. So, yeah, it's another approach, because of course the, the, the normal approach you could say would be to give the person blood pressure medication. And yes, that would of course work and absolutely be prescribed above any other treatment, right? Because you've got to make sure that's okay. But you can't take away the fact that straight anatomy has complete relevance in this also, right? You still want to address the nerves that could be at risk here. So the allopathic approach being medical, homeopathic approach being chiropractic should both be used, right? Can you all see that? being a good possibility. Great, okay. What if we wanted to go to the GI tract on the sympathetic side of things? Now we gotta be a little creative, right? Because the only scenario I've drawn for you here is how to get to things like the heart and lungs, right? When we get lower in the abdomen beneath the diaphragm into the GI tract, we use a different kind of pathway on the sympathetics. So let's do that. Let me show you the three ways we can use sympathetic flow. And then after that, we'll get, we'll get to the PowerPoint. You'll see it all come together. The three ways are like this. The first way is just how it's drawn. A preganglionic neuron comes out of the spine, which, we're gonna be, which would be along the ventral ramus and the rami communicans. Is that right? We need the rami communicantes to communicate with Sympathetic chain. So in order to get to the sympathetic chain, a preganglionic neuron is used along that rami communicantes, usually the white rami of that. Then we synapse at that same level, and then a postganglionic comes out to the organ it's trying to serve. That's the easiest pathway. That's number one. So again, number one is a preganglionic neuron hitting the chain, hitting the ganglia, synapsing at the same level, and then coming out on a postganglionic neuron. So that's one neuron, that's a different one. The second scenario would be a preganglionic neuron approaching the chain ganglia, right? Going up or down the ganglia, then synapsing at a level above or below in the ganglia, then coming out. That's scenario number two. Scenario number three would be where we enter the ganglia from the preganglionic neuron we go up or down, it doesn't matter, but we don't synapse at all. Instead, we come in, we go out without synapsing, but where do we go? To the prevertebral. So the third scenario describes a neuron coming into the sympathetic chain, not synapsing at all. Instead, it's just passing right through it. But if it passes right through it, where must it go? It then goes to the preganglionic, or excuse me, the prevertebral ganglia, right? Then it synapses there. What's the use of synapsing here? Now that neuron can take us where? To the GI tract. So that's what we're going to see in the PowerPoint. This will be the last thing, you know, in this picture that I want to share with you. So simple things to get to organs above the diaphragm we use the two scenarios that we spoke of where we synapse somewhere on the sympathetic chain. The third scenario describes neurons that are used to go where? To the abdominal organs. Okay. <coughs> and those are going to be what's called the splanchnic nerves. So we'll see that coming up. Okay. <coughs> so basically what you need to focus on is the straight anatomy of that picture, if you're a visual learner, then learn it that way. If you're more of, let me read it and write it over and over again and memorize it, then this is the way you want to know right here. Okay.
Okay, so this is the picture that's been on the board through the discussion. Refer to any of the discussion before and reference this picture. Okay, here are the notes that we posted on the board. All the structure of the autonomic uh, fibers and the flow.